man, it is sure getting cold outside. Man, it always seems like it goes straight from summer to winter, just, just like that. Fall is like two days. How's it going, everyone? I hope your day is going well. I hope you had a great summer. And I know if you're anything like me, you are very, very excited for winter. It's already snowing up in the mountains. Sleds are starting to be delivered to dealers, but there's probably some of you that have already got up into the mountains and I'm insanely jealous of you because my sled, unfortunately, has not been delivered yet. If you remember back in March, I actually ordered a Polaris Boost, so I'm still waiting on that. Should be here within the next week or two, I'm hoping, but we'll talk more about that in another video. So without yakking too much, we're gonna get straight into the video, talking about 509's new 2022 gear. As you may have seen, they've dropped their new gear bags. I have two of them right here. We're not really gonna go over the technical aspect of the gear, like all the, the different materials and stuff like that, but I will show you what to kind of expect with the gear, how big the bags are, as well as show you some of the new features and colorways of the gear. And I'll show you what gear I have and what I have on order. So first things first, we're gonna go over the Elias Travel Backpack. As you can see, I still have the tag on it because I didn't actually take it off yet which here, pop that off. So it's got a lot of space in this little guy. If you're trying to compare a size to a backpack that you have at home, this one is considered 25 liters. No, this is not an avalanche backpack at all. So don't, so don't, don't expect that you're getting an avalanche backpack. So right off the bat, uh, we've got three main compartments here. We've got the very front compartment. We'll hold quite a bit of gear here. I have a base layer sitting in there, but it's got a ton of little pockets and space for like if you're going to throw camera accessories or GoPro accessories in here. Got a pretty nice netted pocket here. And this goes down to about right here. And the pocket does go all the way to the bottom on that one. And on the front or back, whichever you want to consider it, it's got a small little zip pocket right here. It's got nice padding. This is for like your sunglasses or something like that. This is not for like goggles or anything like that. I put like sunglasses or something you don't want to get scratched in here. It's got a really nice microfiber felt type material in here. And then going down, we've got a pocket along the side here, again, for like accessories, little pockets here and there. I have heard of someone actually uh, that recently just got a backpack and used it for their son for going to school, which a backpack like this is gonna work great because it's built really well. And then next up on the middle of the bag here, this little guy here, this part right here is what you consider a dry bag. And the reason we call it that is there's this portion right here that folds just like a, a normal dry bag that you would put gear into and then you actually fold it down like this and then it clips onto the side here and here. And that keeps anything that's inside of that pocket nice and dry. As far as inside of that pocket, I have a piece of last year's gear, but it is very big. Let's see if I can light it up a little bit. But you got a ton of space in there. So if you're using this bag for going hiking or something like that, and you know you might be going through rain or anything where you know you're gonna get wet or your gear's gonna get wet, it's nice to have a little dry bag like that to keep things out of the rain. All right, and then in the very back here, we've got a pocket for a laptop up to a 15 inch, and it would go in the very back right here. Got a nice little locking strap with it as well as a pocket for like the charger or any cables that you might need to bring with you. Along the back, you've got three really nice thick pads. You got a nice little strap here and you can actually adjust it down to a lower part down here and keep it nice and tight. And you can see the thickness of the backpack strap itself here too. Along the right side here, you've got a pocket that you can open up. And this is where you would put like a bottle, water bottle, fits in there pretty nicely and then collapse it in, and zips right up so that it's not in the way. And then on the other side here, you've got a nice, really quality feeling handle along the side. And this feels like a handle that's really not gonna be easily breakable. All right, and that is the Elias travel bag. All right, and next up, let's go over this big boy right here. This is the Revel wheeled duffel bag. As soon as I heard about this last year, I could not have been more stoked. I've been hoping and praying for a 509 gear bag for a long time now, and this is really exactly what I was looking for. First off, let's kind of go around the outside just to talk about a few things on the outside first. Just like the handle on the backpack, it's got two really nice solid feeling handles right up top here, as well as one on the side here. And along the top here, you've got a little ID card holder right here. This pulls completely out. You can pull this all the way out just like that. And it's got a little elastic band here to keep it tucked in there really nicely. From my experience with it so far, this thing is built really well. It's reinforced in places where it should be. Uh, this whole bottom here is very sturdy, very strong, and it'll stand up on its own with no problem. 
Along the bottom here, you've got a really nice strong material as well as two little bumpers to keep it off the ground a little bit. Then obviously the wheels here. On the back side, you've got nice thick runners going all the way up the bag. So if you're going on vacation or something like that and you want to get on an airplane, this bag would do really well and it's not gonna get beat up or anything like that. Along the top here, you've got a handle, comes all the way up, pretty simple. And then along the other side here, got a really cool feature. This little guy here, open this up and this is your mat. It comes, it comes from the factory, not attached obviously. You would use this to stand on while you're changing so that you're not getting your feet or sock wet or dirty. Whether you're changing on dirt, on the snow, whether you're changing on dirt, snow, or even on your deck, this is really nice to roll out and not have to worry about it. So I'll show you how it connects here. So reach inside, there's a little lip that has the other side of the Velcro. Flip it around, line it up, attach it, and that's it. Stuff it back in there, zip it up, that's it. All right, now onto the important part the inside of the bag. We'll start with the top here and where you put your helmet. You will find a little, a few of these little guys in there. These just help trap moisture in the shipping process. So you can either throw these out or I've actually just left them in my bags before just to help trap moisture as you're using the bag and throwing gear in and out of it throughout the season. And I'll show you how helmet goes in here. So set it down in there, zip it up. And on the inside here, it's got a re that really nice felt material so that you're not scratching up your helmet. All right, then for the main bag, we're gonna scooch this over because I have all of my 2022 gear. Took it out of the box, but haven't really opened anything yet. And this is a very small amount of what I actually ordered. The reason I don't have everything, well, we'll, we'll kind of get into that later into the video. But for the inside of the main compartment, you can see you got quite a bit of room in here. I would definitely recommend putting your helmet in first so that uh, when you do have all of your gear in here, you're not having to like squish your gear over to shove your helmet in there. And then along the side here, you, it's got, you actually got a set of fid locks and you pull this little string right here and that'll detach it right there. Unzip it all the way. And same on the other side here, you've got another fid lock, pull it up. Then you can open the bag completely, just like that. That way, if you lost a set of gloves or you need to clean out the bag, it makes it a little bit easier. And then as I was playing with the bag here, I actually found one more little compartment along the side here that was hiding. Unzip, and then it looks like it's just this area just to throw any kind of accessories or gloves or something like that, goggles, whatever you need. And then finally, for the boots compartment, this completely opens, nice. And I've actually got my new boots here. New boot goofing. I'm just goofing. New boot goofing. Oh! We'll set these off to the side and we'll go over these here in just a moment. Uh, you can see along here, there's a little vent and that's on both sides. So that when you do throw your boots in here, there's a little bit of airflow. Then I'll give you a little peek inside. Nothing special, but what makes it really nice is that it kind of goes inside out like this so that if there is dirt or snow or anything like that in here, it makes it really nice to clean out. All right, so we're gonna start off with some outerwear. Right here, we've got the Racing Red Evolve bib shell. I saw Caleb Kisturki wearing these last year, testing them out, and I really liked the colorway with black and red and white. So I wanted to get a set for this year. Nice and bright, holy cow. It's gonna look really good on the mountain. I think, I believe 509 did make a couple changes to the Evolve gear, just minor improvements over last year. Overall, the same materials and everything, which I really didn't have any kind of issues with mine last year. But that's the Evolve 22 bib shell. And here's more of that uh, silica stuff. I, I save these a lot just to throw into gear bags or goggle compartments, stuff like that. All right, and then next up, we've got the Racing Red jacket. I really like the colorway. And actually, this feels like a different material here. I'm not sure if you can see that very well. The like shoulder material is a little bit different than the normal Evolve material. And that material does extend down all the way to the side here. 
But just like last year, it's got the magnetic little tab here that goes over. But overall, very similar to last year's 21 gear. Just a couple minor improvements from what I see compared to last year's stuff. But other than that, looking pretty good. All right, next up, we got some new Sinister X6 goggles. I didn't go with the Ignites for this year. And the biggest reason why was because I always forgot to charge the Ignite batteries on mine last year. So I just wanted to keep it simple for this year and just go with the regular goggle. I've been using the Kingpins for several years now. This is actually my first set of the Sinister goggles. So it'll be interesting to see if there's any major differences between the Kingpins and the Sinisters. You can see I got the racing red version right here. We got the shark skin on another one. Then I got three different spare lenses. One is just the standard clear tint. I really like these. I really like having just a clear lens no matter what goggle that I have. I got a set of the photochromatic yellow to amber lenses and then a set of the just the standard polarized yellow lenses. What I really want to do this year as far as lenses is actually do a comparison, take as many of the different styles that I have, both Kingpin and the Sinister goggles, and really do an on-camera good comparison between sunlight, overcast, snowing, and maybe even rain. So I'm really trying to make that happen this year. I've been trying to do it for the last couple of years, but haven't really had much success on that. But let's get to the next one, which is the shark skin boots. I was super stoked when I saw these things. So I'm really happy to finally have them in my hands in person. I really like the shark skin colorway. It's just something a little bit different. It's not a, like a straight blue or a straight green. And I'm assuming that there's probably a lot of other people that ordered the shark skin color as well, but hey, whatever, it's cool. I like it. I have more gear on the way that actually matches the shark skin color. So I'll have to do a small photo shoot or something like that and throw it up on Instagram to, to show you what the final product will be. As far as the boots themselves, there doesn't look like there's a whole lot of changes. This is actually my boots from not last year, but two years ago, uh, I purposely I purposely did not get a new set last year just because I really wanted to test these out for two seasons to make sure that they were gonna be a really great boot for the average consumer. So I'll give you a quick comparison between the two here. They're both size 11. So the biggest few differences that I see right off the bat with these boots uh, is gonna be the little hook here where the bottom of your pants connect. This little loop goes on to, goes on to this little loop right here. Uh, on the old boots, it's up here a little bit. Uh, one issue that I had is one of them did rip off at one point, but on the new ones, it's much better anchored down. It's a lot thicker loop there, so should work out quite a bit better. Now going up the middle of the boot here, uh, the cables that run across, you can see that it has these little plastic little runners that the cable goes in between, probably just for quality and durability purposes. But overall, it definitely looks like they beefed it up a little bit uh, for the uh, for the BOA system. You can see the knob here. It's a little bit different. Uh, the little surrounding here is a little bit thinner on the new one, which works out really well if you have uh, gloves on. So it makes it a little bit easier to uh, work with the knob there compared to the old one. On the sides, it's about the same. And then on the back, it's about the same as well. Uh, the biggest thing that I found uh, on the 509 boots that I loved I had an old set of boots from a different manufacturer, probably like five or six years ago, I think, because I've had 509 boots. This will be my fourth season with 509 boots. I had a set of boots from a different manufacturer, uh, and the biggest thing that wore down, uh, they, they were pretty much gone after three seasons. After the first season, though, uh, was the biggest tell. As anyone knows that has uh, ridden Polaris sleds, the running boards will really tear up your boots, tear up the, the bottom side of your boots. And those other set of boots were completely torn up after just one season. And then these 509 boots right here, this is the second year that they made the boots. My first pair that I had, I don't have anymore, but you can see on the bottom of this boot, uh, it definitely does have wear. So it's had two seasons, two full seasons with this boot. Uh, and you can see that the rubber is chipped away a little bit. You can kind of compare the two there. After two full seasons, I would still run this another full season. And honestly, three to four years on a set of boots, they're gonna be pretty worn out by the end. So by the time you should probably upgrade them after about three to four seasons. And that's only if you're doing like the backcountry style riding. If you're more of a, a relaxed trail rider or something like that, you'll probably get more use out of snowmobile boots and gear. But overall, I'm really stoked to get these out on the snow. So let's move on to the last set of gear that I have, which is actually just a pair of gloves. This is the low five gloves in the red mist. I got these more as like a springtime riding type glove. I had a set last year 
uh, that I really loved, uh, but I accidentally tore them. So I got a new set and these will go along real nicely with the racing red gear. All right, and as to the reason why I don't have my full line of gear here yet, it's because of our good friend, that wonderful, uh, let's call it the sickness that has been going around and uh, that's pretty much screwed up all the ports, all the shipping, processing, manufacturing, everything. That is it, the world. So that's pretty much why a lot of the 509 gear hasn't shown up yet. Uh, there's some stuff that is gonna come in uh, next week, in a couple weeks and even into January. And that's, that's nothing to do with 509. That's all the manufacturing, shipping, stuff like that that's been slowed down by the whole sickness that's been going on. So the gear that I still do have on order at the moment, I got a little uh, list here as you can see, and I'll throw up on screen what each of the items look like. First up is the tactical sock in acid green. Next is an Arsenal t-shirt and that's in the shark skin, kind of the same color as the boots. Next is a goggle hard case, and that's again in the shark skin color. This is gonna be a recurring thing through a few more items. <laughs> Next is the five dry shark skin t-shirt. Another piece of gear I got was this tech flannel in the black and white. I love these things. I have it in the blue and black. The only thing that changed was the hoodie. The other one, it was a, I think it was like a, a, a two-piece material. This one feels like uh, either a one-piece or just a little bit thinner uh, two-piece material. Next up was the FZN Level 1 Pant and Shirt. It's going to be very similar to these ones right here. And what I really love about these things compared to other brands and like Under Armour is the felt material on the inside. These, if you don't have a base layer, you need to get yourself one. It's well worth it. Next up is the Stoke gloves in the shark skin color, as well as Stoke socks in the shark skin color. A Stoke bib in large. Uh, 509 didn't make a Stoke bib in the shark fin color, which is fine because that's a lot of gear in the same color. <laughs> also got the Stoke shell in, in shark skin color, and also got an Altitude 2.0 helmet in the shark skin color as well. And last but not least, I also got a second helmet, uh, but this time in racing red to match the racing red gear, uh, and also got the free range gloves in the racing red color as well. But again, a lot of those things are delayed at the moment. And that's pretty much all the 509 gear that I ordered for this season. I'm really looking forward to getting out on the sled. Uh, hopefully it shows up here pretty soon. <laughs> I did have an offer from a buddy to borrow a sled here pretty soon so I can at least get up on the snow and get my first ride out of the way. All right, and if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to answer it the best that I can. Again, I wanna thank you for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you know when I upload my next video. We'll see you next time, thanks.